Tonight, we're back in South Africa with Matt Dubber, and this time, he's night vision hunting. Today's episode takes us to a little piece of paradise near the South African coastline, surrounded by rivers, cliffs and valleys, and overflowing with an impressive array of animals. We meet up with local hunter and outfitter Nico Els of East Cape Bushveld Hunting, with the aim of putting the ultimate sporter to the ultimate test. The animals we'll be hunting tonight are not found anywhere else in the world. Scrub hares resemble the jackrabbits of North America, nesting above the ground and reaching up to 4.5 kilograms. Spring hares are rodents that resemble small kangaroos and are only seen late at night. Both are incredibly difficult to shoot with an air rifle, so tonight we've fitted the Ultimate Sporter Extra in 22 calibre with a night sight eagle, which will help us creep in undetected. Most of the land here is dotted with bush and thick vegetation, but there are a couple of open pastures where we know the hares and spring hares like to graze. After scouting the area for a while, we pick our spot for the night. Before nightfall, we decide to check the rifle's zero. We have travelled a pretty bumpy road and making sure you're on target is always the responsible thing to do. The rifle is dead on and all that's left to do is wait for darkness to fall. The moon is full and the adrenaline is pumping. We set out on foot and it's not long before we begin to see some action. Uh, we've spotted a uh couple spring hairs and scrub hairs, probably about three or four spring hairs and two scrub hairs, maybe about 200 meters out on one of these fields. And uh, the idea is to try and sneak up on them without them seeing or hearing us, uh, which is going to be very difficult because we have a full moon and these things have extremely sensitive eyes. Uh, if we can get within 50 meters then, uh, it should be pretty easy to set up. We've got the wind in our backs. Uh, I think if we, if we move around, to the right through this brush here, then uh, we can try and you know stalk up from from these sides, yeah, um, and see if we can get within 50 meters of them. Mm. We just need to stay in, in the trees, you know, yeah. just for a bit of cover. We have a long way to stalk, but Nico knows this farm like the back of his hand, and we get ourselves within range. I wait for the first spring hare to keep his head still before squeezing the trigger for a perfect shot. I spend a little too much time on the second one and he makes a break for it. Absolutely nailed that shot. This shot was probably about 45 meters, but I'll hold over perfectly and place the shot right where I want it. It looks like the field is empty, but we decide to scan around one more time before heading off, and what do you know, we spot a pair of eyes looking right back at us. There's a right there. There's a hair right over there. I get down low and prepare for the shot. This one's a scrub hair. Not even a minute later we spot another hare no further than 15 meters from the previous one. It's just a matter of lining up the crosshairs and taking the shot. And he does not know what's hit him. The great thing about these hairs is that their safety mechanism is to lie flat in the, in the, in the scrub, in the long grass, in the brush. So when we came here, they obviously both went and hit and laid out flat in the brush. Um, thinking that we wouldn't see them, but this night side picks up their eyes perfectly. So they, although they thought that we had forgotten about them, and in fact we had, we had, uh, we had searched around. We thought there was nothing left. We were about to move on. Uh, we actually just took one, look, one more look around, and I saw the eye of that animal just glinting at me through the bushes, and we set up for it. 
it took the shot and absolutely hammered it. That shot, you could hear it hit hard and that thing went straight down. That was awesome. Man, I'm pumped. I think I must have got a pretty solid headshot on this guy because uh, there's a lot of blood on the side of his head. It's always a, a good sign. And uh, it's quite interesting to note the differences between the, uh, these two animals, the, the spring hare and the scrub hare. Uh, the scrub hare lives above the ground. It's a nocturnal animal, but um, during the day it will simply go under a bush, flatten its ears back and just lie still all day. Um, and then obviously at night come out to feed. Um, spring hare is also very nocturnal. Uh, you won't see them in the day at all. Um, but they live in burrows underneath the ground. They're really, really good at digging. Um, so if you take a look at their front, front feet, they've got really, really um, sharp claws that they use to loosen the soil. Uh, long, long, long sharp claws. And then they push the soil back and they kick it out of the holes with these back feet, which almost have, um, like, the claws almost have scoops in them. So you can get a lot of um, soil and kick it back. Uh, this is a very, very interesting animal. A look at the animal's head confirms the perfect shot placement and I move off to retrieve the scrub hairs. Now these are a lot bigger than the rabbits you get in the UK. These are big boys. Uh, this one's still fairly small by hair standards. They can get up to four and a half to five kilograms and they have a lot of meat on them. So uh, if you like hair, none of this goes to waste. Uh, this is a, I'd say this is maybe about two and a half kilos, maybe slightly more than that but they get up to five, so probably about double the size. They are really our monsters. The hunt continues as we make our way to another field. A quick look through the spotter reveals another scrub here. He's heard us and he's off, but he stops long enough for me to take a shot. The pellet hits him right behind the eye and he's down. We decide to lie low and wait for another hare to appear. There are plenty in this area and we know it's only a matter of time before we get another opportunity. And sure enough, we get our chance. This one's a long way off. To do a two mold of hold over there. <laughs> yeah. We retrieve hare number four and then it's straight back to business. We keep on searching until we get another opportunity. A fifth scrub here presents itself and we stalk within range. We set up for the shot but he hears our movement and tries to make a break for it. The shot's a really long one at almost 70 meters but I drop him in his tracks with a shot to the heart and lungs. Uh, quite a distinct difference uh, between the, the hare and the spring hare. Um, they're obviously going to be different because they're two completely different species but uh, the hares don't dig so they don't have the same claws on the front. They've got very soft um, padded feet and uh, they've got long legs, all hares do, um, but not quite as long as the spring hares because they don't, they don't hop around like the spring hares do. Um, but as you can see, uh, their, their, ear, their ears are quite long and uh, they've, uh, they often fold their ears back. A lot of them have these bald patches here where they, they could actually flatten their ears completely. And if they keep still, they're the same color as the, the bushes, so you won't even see them, even in, in broad daylight. It's been an awesome night so far, but it's not over yet. We've shot plenty of scrub hairs, but I want to take home just one more spring hair. The one advantage of the full moon is that we can actually see where we're walking, <laughs> which is nice because uh, if it was uh, overcast or if it was, was a new moon, we'd be screwed. We'd have to really uh, stumble our way through the bushes and that would, that would be a painful experience amongst all these uh, acacia thorn trees. <laughs> so far, the spring hairs have done a really good job of eluding us and as we keep on searching, we realize it's not going to get any easier. We scan field after field, the spotter allowing us to see any animals within 500 meters. 
There are plenty of buck about and the odd scrub hill too, but no spring hairs yet. There's a lot of scrub hairs, but no spring hairs in this field, so... Um, we've taken quite a few scrub hairs already, so... We have to exercise some self-control now. But self-control is a very important part of hunting. You can't just shoot everything you see. After about an hour of searching, Nico finally spots our animal. We move within range and set up for the shot. Okay, it shouldn't be more than about 30 meters now. Okay, great. Should find it first. Okay, there he is. I finally got that second spring hair I've been looking for. A scrub hair moves in right behind him, but we leave it for another night. Nice. Nailed him, eh? Well done. Thanks. Good shot. Nice. Just as we thought they weren't there anymore, we spotted that one, managed to sneak up close enough for the shot. Just as we thought the night was over, we managed to get the last one. Super stoked. Let's go get him. Okay, that is perfect placement there, hey. Yeah, between the eye and the ear. That's where you need it, eh? Yeah. See his eyes bulging out as well. Yeah. How about there? Yeah, that's perfect placement. Well done. Sure. Let's just turn him over and see the other side. Yeah. Yeah, he can't get better than that, hey. But it was, I think we were perfect distance, so. Yeah. It was great. Cool, man. So stoked. Last spring here of the night, that's why we're talking loudly again. Uh, we've called it a night now. Uh, we've got that last one that we were looking for, even though it took a while. Well, I wasn't quite sure what to expect today. The, we had a full moon and some horrible weather, but it, it seemed to clear up quite nicely and uh, we managed to get uh, a really decent haul. We got five scrub hairs and two spring hairs, which is a really, really good haul for an air rifle hunt. And um, started off with a really nice walk and stalk um, through one of these fields. Very happy with how the rifle performed. Um, to go out with new equipment, it's not always easy, but uh, this gun performed better than any gun I've ever had before. So I'm extremely happy. And I think I uh, just need to give a, a big uh, thank you to Nico and East Cape Bushfelt Hunting for um, putting us on the animals. He, you can tell Nico really knows what he's doing. So uh, thanks Nico, it was really cool and I'm really keen to see what tomorrow holds. Yeah, what a pleasure having you guys here. As I head off to bed with a huge smile on my face, I know that it won't be long until I return to the spot. The ultimate sporter has passed the ultimate test with flying colours and provided us with some meat for the table and an experience to remember for years to come. To find out more about Mad Dubber, search for Air Arms Hunting SA on YouTube. To find out more about the Air Arms S510 Ultimate Sporter FAC in 2.2, visit airarms.co.uk and click one of the boxes below to choose another amazing air powered video from Team Wild TV and subscribe to be kept up to date with all the new shows and videos. You and Air Arms, a winning combination.